when you get the airplane back on the ground and you check, the probability is is that it's not going to be clear cut. There was going to be a major failure that threatened that flight, right? When you stop and check, it's it's going to probably turn out that you didn't need to sacrifice productivity for safety. Now, what does your organization do? Now, what happens to that courageous voice? That's the test. When everyone says that's good that you stopped, when the when the evidence doesn't signal clearly that it was a necessary sacrifice, because if you only wait for clear cut evidence that the sacrifice is necessary, guess what you're going to wait for? You're going to wait for the damn plane to crash because that's the mm. only really definitive evidence. And by the way, when the plane crashes, look at Boeing's rationalizations for why 346 dead people didn't matter. Right. They came up with every rationalization they could that this this really wasn't about the engineering of the airplane. Right. right? Even when it crashes twice. Yeah. That's how powerful those rationalizations. That's how powerful retreat. That's how powerful retrenchment is. Then in the face of two accidents, 346 dead people, they're still doing. It. Yeah. Right? That's not to pick on Boeing. Because they're not the only time this has happened. Not the only way this plays out. So you've got to move it in the other direction, where you're sensitive to these early signals, and that you have, and you have an organization that is willing to recognize is when do we make and when do we make the trade off? When do we make the sacrifice? When do we put the long term, right, again ahead of the short term? Occasionally, we see long term uh, ahead of short term. Uh, given uncertainty, given novelty, the Icelandic volcano was a particularly inefficient way to put the long term in, um, in, um, uh, ahead of the short term. Uh, we don't understand volcanic ash effects on the engines. They will shut down traffic, but they quickly discovered they had, they were not poised to adapt. They didn't have any of the preparatory investment at a, um, uh, continental scale, at a European scale. To say, how do all these different organizations interact in order to make a timely, higher tempo decision about where do we get the information? What kind of information do we need? How widespread does the shutdown have to be? Um, uh, how do we get, how do we end up, how do we plan reactivating this, uh, the airspace, et cetera, given the disruption of, of stopping flights for multiple days? Uh, there was a ton of things that had to be worked out, both to understand the risk, plan what was safe given the risk, and resume operations as the risk receded, all of which was an enormous struggle. Everyone was floundering around. And some people will take the lesson, well, we should have just kept flying. People were like, no, we didn't demonstrate good, graceful extensibility in the face of a surprising, shocking challenge. And of course, yeah. by the way, you know, was this the first time volcanic ash had gotten in the way of airplanes? No. It was just tended to be in places where we didn't have such high density air traffic. 